In the first video in this series, we looked at the basics of Seek24, creating some basic drum and bass patterns, and then triggering those patterns in real time to create some cheesy electronica that sounds totally ridiculous when you speed it up. We didn't spend long in the pattern editor last time, so we'll definitely get back to that in a little bit. But first, I want to show you some of the really fun stuff, the real-time pattern triggering features that make Seek24 such a fantastic tool for live performance. Well, I've got Sig24 open and I've also got my keyboard open down here so you can see what I'm going to do with triggering these patterns. Um, when you trigger a pattern by default when the transport is running, it triggers it immediately and that's handy sometimes. Sometimes you do actually want that, but a lot of the time what you'll want to do is trigger a pattern at the next repeat. And especially if you're coordinating three, four, five different patterns that you want to start at the same time or finish at the same time, you know, trying to hit those keys all at the same time is going to be nigh on impossible. So if you can cue those to trigger at the next repeat, that's going to be much easier. Now to do that, all you have to do is hold down a modifier key and then press the key of the pattern that you want to trigger. The default modifier key is right control and that's a terrible default because control and Q, which is what this pattern here would be, is exit and it will exit and it will not prompt you to save your work. <laughs> so be warned. Um, what I go is I go into the keyboard options, click here, and I use the right Windows key. Just click on the right Windows key, I'll press the right Windows key, and it'll set that option for you. So we'll just start with the base pattern here, and then I'll use queuing to trigger some other patterns um, to follow up from that. So you can see how queuing can let you trigger or untrigger multiple patterns on the one repeat, all in you know, all in perfect sync, and it's very very handy for that. There's one other option to bear in mind with queuing, and that's an option called Keep Queue, and that's mapped by default to the backslash key. When you hit that, from that point on, any action you do to trigger a pattern will result in it being queued. So all you have to do, instead of having to hit right Windows button and the, the, trip, the pattern that you want to trigger, just hit the pattern button. And that stays in effect until the next time you hit the pattern modifier button, so right Windows key. There's one more pattern triggering option I want to cover and that's snapshots. Um, I've got a snapshot set up for left Windows key. Um, what you do is you hold that key and then trigger or untrigger whatever patterns you like. As soon as you release that key, the pattern layout, whatever you've done to it, will revert back to whatever it was at the point where you started holding that key. So a demonstration is probably going to make this a lot more obvious. Let's go set up some patterns. So you can see that the snapshot let me take those patterns out and then just add them back in just straight away, very, very quickly. Um, so that can be very handy if you want to take a bunch of parts out and then just bring them all back in at the same time. Easier than queuing them up. Um, you can't queue the snapshot action, unfortunately, but apart from that, it's very, very handy. Okay, let's open up the pattern editor and have another look at that. So just right click and edit on one of the patterns. Here we are with the base pattern. So we're going to do a few things to this base pattern to just add a bit more interest to it. Um, the first thing we're going to do actually is play with the velocities of the notes. These are down here and you can edit these just by clicking and dragging a line across them. You can actually drag it in a straight line like that, change them all the same value or you can build curves like that or if you want to change individual values you can just sort of draw little lines there like that. Um, now if you don't have any notes selected the lines that you draw will affect any note they touch. If you select specific notes, say these lower notes, you can set just the values for those notes. So I'll set those to a lower value, sort of there. 
we'll grab these higher notes, set these to a higher value up here, and then we get a bit of an accent on those notes now when we play that pattern. Cool, that sounds good. Now, the next thing we'll do is expand this pattern out a bit. We've only got one bar at the moment. We click here, we can select four bars. Four bars sounds good to me. And what we're gonna do is just add a bit of a chord progression. So we'll copy these notes, but then transpose them into different, um, onto different notes as we go through the pattern. And we can zoom out a little bit as well, actually, to help with that. There we go. So we select these first, this first bar worth of notes. Let's do a Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And we'll drop that down onto a C. That's the first one's on a D. Then onto an F and a G. There we go. And you'll notice as these patterns play as well, that the it doesn't matter how many times each the other patterns have to repeat, you can just play those. Even though this first pattern is longer, those other patterns will just repeat over and over again at their own pace um, and still match, sort of match up with this first pattern. And we'll just look at one more thing while we're here and that's MIDI CC automation. Um, so in this case, we're gonna change the mod wheel. The mod wheel in Xsynth maps to the filter cutoff. So we can put a bit of a filter sweep in here across these notes. Click on the event button and then instead of having note on velocity, which is the default one, select modulation wheel, which is CC1. Um, now, there are no events here. To add events to actually set parameters on, we need to add them into this little bar here. And just add them just like notes. So if you only want yeah, um, events at specific points, you can just add those in. I just want sort of a, a flow of, of events that we can then edit. So we're just going to start drawing a line. So it'll go down, up, down, up. And we should get a filter sweep happening. Cool, that works. We can just sweep that down a bit more there, a bit up there, and yeah. Cool, I'm happy with that. Just adds a bit more variety to the part. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is the overlay feature or the background pattern feature. Now, just say you're editing a, a fill, for instance. You've got a few notes here. Let's just zoom in a little. We've got three notes here. How do those notes relate to the notes that that fill, or in the, in the, the pattern that that fill is filling over the top of? You know, we're playing the kick and snare. It's going to bring this in every now and then to add a fill in. But how do you program this without sort of having a, an image of this in your mind? Well, you can click on this button here and pick another pattern to have overlaid in the background. So that just shows you the notes of the kick and snare pattern and then you can build your other patterns on top of that. And if we edit one of these other fill patterns, um, if you leave, as long as you leave this on, you'll just see that, that same pattern again and again. So that's cool. It's just a handy little feature that's worth keeping in mind. We'll turn that off again now and look at one last thing which is MIDI recording. Now there are two ways you can edit or input data via a MIDI keyboard. Um, I've just created a new pattern. The first is via step sequencing which is pretty straightforward really. It's just stepping along uh, entering notes one at a time rather than sort of trying to record a sequence. What we'll just make sure we do, go into the options here MIDI input and make sure that the you've got a tick box next to your MIDI input device. So this is the USB MIDI cable that's plugged into my keyboard. Um, and now there's just a couple of buttons down here. This one, well first we'll have to send this to a synth. Let's send that to Y synth. This button here records incoming MIDI data. So we enable that. This one sort of flows it through to the synth that you've got selected here. So as you play the notes, they'll get played through to the synth as well. So let's do that. And then we can edit some, put some If you enter sort of two notes or multiple notes while still holding the first one down, they go in as a chord. Otherwise, they just go in on their own line. And you can see there's a little cursor here as well. Um, you can move that with the cursor keys. So if you want to go back, you can do that. More likely, if you're sort of entering a beat. So 
just got to, we can just play that now. Cool. Um, the other way you can edit MIDI is to actually record it on the fly. And to do that, just play the pattern. And it'll just record those notes in while it's playing. Um, if you have the pattern enabled, as we did then, then it will just, as soon as it repeats, it'll play that. But you can sort of put in one note, put in another note, and on different repeats, put in extra notes here and there. And that could be a really interesting way to build up drum parts. You can do it just a sort of a hit at a time. You can hit a, you know, put your kick drum in, and then while it's looping and, and playing that loop that you've already recorded, you can just add extra notes in for different events. So you can build up patterns in a, sort of a more iterative way that way. So that really covers the, the basics of pattern editing. There's a few other things that you can bear in mind. You can quantize notes, so if you select a bunch of notes, hit the quantize tool, that'll snap them to the grid, um, which can be quite handy, or you can just undo that. Um, the grid is obviously the grid that you've specified here. Um, there's a quantize on record option here as well, so it'll quantize the notes as soon as they go in. I don't really see the need for that. I think I'd rather stick with recording the, the raw MIDI data and then quantizing it after the fact if you really want to. Um, just bear in mind you've got the, the zoom functions here. If you really want to change the um, time signature, you can do that here. We've got 4-4. Everything I've done in SIG24 has been 4-4. Um, and I don't really know how well it would handle things if you weren't running in 4.4, but hey, give it a go and see how you go. I think that covers just about everything you'd want to do in the Pattern Editor. Mm -hmm.